Welcome back to another DF Direct slash uh, discussion video. This time we have some brand new footage of Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales for PlayStation 5. And I wanted to bring on my good friend Alex Battaglia to discuss it. Hey there, John. Excited to talk about Marvel's Miles, whatever it's called. Yeah, let's talk. <laughs> hey Pete, it is your way. First impressions are extremely positive, I'd say. I mean, the original game was one of the best looking titles on PlayStation 4. One of my favorites of 2018 as well. And this is a great example of how you can leverage work that was done with an original game and sort of create sort of an add-on pseudo sequel in the in the vein of Uncharted The Lost Legacy, for instance, but leveraging the new power of, of a brand new machine. So obviously, you know, Miles Morales brings to the table things like increased rendering resolution, a lot of extra detail, ray tracing and more. And we do get to see some of that in this video. And I think, you know, for us, perhaps the most exciting aspect is uh, the ray tracing. Yeah, yeah. And this is like the, the kind of video we're looking at really high quality was this kind of 4K 30 FPS. I think it's the 30 FPS mode we're looking at here, uh, like where it's moving the camera all the time. But in spite of that, you get actually a pretty good look at uh, the reflections because they're not breaking down. Uh, usually in a game like last gen games that were using screen space reflections, uh, Spider-Man flying in front of the screen, getting in front of all the objects that could be reflecting would show a lot of breakup. And that's yes. something we're not seeing really at all in this trailer here to a degree uh, like we would see in a last gen game. And that really helps it look so much more stable and I would say CG like uh, in comparison. Exactly. And I think that that becomes perhaps most evident in this sequence here where Spider-Man busts into the mall uh, and there's all kinds of arm flailing. There's action happening. There's pedestrians everywhere. It's this beautiful multi-level environment. And of course, all the floors are reflective along with some other materials. Uh, this is a perfect example of an area where just lots of just pure SSR it would look very nice by itself, but you would see a lot of artifacts as objects occlude the uh, the the reflector, I guess, yeah, from yeah. view. And when that happens, that's where you get all those glitches. And it's especially evident in a game where you have a constant third person character on screen, especially when their arms are moving around. Because yeah, you just raise your arm in front of uh, you know the object there, and suddenly there's nothing to reflect into, <laughs> right? So yeah. that causes an issue. This is where the ray trace reflections really first stood out to me, I think. Yeah, one thing that also stood out to me is um, kind of at the beginning of the trailer, we do say that this um, is obviously looks up a lot better than it would be if it's just pure screen space reflections. But I actually do think there's something uh, more visible in this trailer and perhaps new or something that wasn't exactly visible in previous ones before is that it does look like they're actually using screen space reflections to a degree to cover objects very far in the distance in some scenes, like, um, in the beginning of the trailer when uh, Spider-Man crosses in front of the water outside all these buildings here, if you look at the buildings in the distance as Spider-Man crosses in front of them on the water, the reflections of these buildings, you can see that he obscures them for a bit and the reflections uh, kind of disappear for those split seconds of a frame, like normal SSR. And this is uh, a common optimization that we've seen on PC games like um, Crisis Remastered and Battlefield V originally, that it, it's a really good idea for a game like this, especially an open world one, where having a lot of objects into that ray tracing structure so far into the distance, it's really hard to do that in an open world game. There's so many objects. So this covers reflections for them, for objects in the distance without looking bad at all. And you really won't notice it actually in most gameplay. Yeah, honestly. exactly. Because most of the interruptions to SSR happen with near field objects when uh, a local object sort of parallaxes with it and interrupts the reflection. But by just focusing on those, those distant objects, it sort of fills in the reflection without creating anything distracting. And like you say, drawing reflections way, like, you know, way into a, a BVH structure stretching far off into the distance, that's extremely expensive. So I think that this is an optimization we're going to see a lot this generation. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something, we, like you said, we've seen already a lot on the PC. Uh, and this to me seems like something in a few years time where PC versions might have like the high end ray tracing settings where you might be able to crank it up a little bit more and push it further yeah. out. But for now, I think the way it works here is really well. And I like the solution of overlaying SSR with ray traced reflections. It does create sort of a more wholesome image uh, that really works well. Yeah, and it'll also cover things that cannot be traced at all in 
uh, ray tracing uh, because the way ray tracing works in hardware, like it could cover things like animated grass, which is really hard to do in ray tracing. Yeah. It could cover decals. And, you know, there may be evidence of this too, of them kind of blending in SSR over the normal ray tracing in that uh, mall sequence we talked about, where if you stop a frame really quickly and you look after Spider-Man's arm or body crossed in front of a progesterone there, uh, you can see that it looks slightly different, like there's a little bit of a ghost there or something like that that looks like SSR blending in. That's a good thing because it, it'll make the image look more cohesive. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And everything we're seeing, you know, these, these little notes, it's just a way to better sort of understand the way developers can utilize ray tracing, especially early in the generation, since this is one of the first console ray trace titles we've seen to date. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really good indicator of where we could go. And the fact that it is being used uh, so heavily across a large open world game, which is far more difficult than sort of a more limited tunnel driven experience, uh, that's a really good sign for this generation. And I think that that sort of suggests that we'll see a lot more ray tracing than we might have initially thought uh, going Real, forward, yeah. which is very promising indeed. But yeah, it's not the only thing that we can really take away from this trailer, obviously. Uh, one of the other things I really liked was um, just the materials quality, specifically on the characters. I mean, this was yeah, always was very high quality in the original PlayStation 4 game, but there's a few points where it sort of really zooms in. You get this super up close look at the character. Uh, and man, I just love seeing that amount of detail, especially <laughs> which, by the way, of course, the rendering resolution, we couldn't easily pixel count this due to the judicious use of motion blur, which by the way, this is still pretty much my favorite implementation of per pixel motion blur, just the right shutter speed. Everything mm -hmm. looks so filmic, but you can at least tell that the, the, the actual rendering resolution does seem to be a lot higher than it was on PlayStation 4 as you would expect. Yeah. The other temporal injection technique is really great, and it already had a great presentation on the original PS4 and PS4 Pro, I would say. And here, this is just like a higher refinement of it. And if it is a dynamic resolution setup, uh, which would make sense because a lot of their games do that, uh, you really won't notice it actually dropping resolution in gameplay if it does. It's, Precisely. it's just a good reconstruction technique. Yeah. And then, you know, that's what allows you to really appreciate the extra texture detail that you get here, uh, which is really exceptional. I love the shot at the end when they zoom in on his sort of backpack spider suit there. Uh, there's just so much detail on there. The way the textures are tiled, it actually looks like it's it's perfect for this kind of suit material. You even get a little bit of the, the fuzz on the one material and the way the zippers are drawn, like all of this stuff. It's, it's really, really nice. Another thing is that uh, this kind of trailer, you can see an extensive usage of film grain, which I don't know if it was necessarily as high of a film grain value as we saw in the first game. Uh, because it's here, it's pretty obvious here, actually. Miles, get out of here. I think they definitely had some nice film grain in the original, but mm -hmm. it's hard to tell if it's been amped up for this one. But yeah, image quality is, is great. So, and I do appreciate the nice film grain effect they have going on. I know not everybody loves it, but I think it looks great. Post effects <laughs> heavy image, you know, lots of motion blur, lots of film grain. Uh, I think it makes it look very, very filmic. The fact that the re you know the reflections don't break down as much anymore, uh, like when you're swinging through the city, the image just looks so much more cohesive than a last gen title. Precisely, and I think that, that'll show up really well when people have it in their hands. And that also extends to things like um, the distance of pedestrians, cars, and other objects in the distance. Yes. I think this was really well handled on PlayStation Four. But obviously, this is LOD management is key for an open world game. You know, because you can't display everything. You need to be loading things in. You need to restrict what's drawn in the distance uh, mm -hmm. to keep your performance budget in check. And they managed it well before. But obviously, with the additional power here, we do get a glimpse of some of the additional detail that can be visible at any one point while swinging through the city. Uh, which, again, combined with all of those elements that you just said, it just creates this more cohesive look. And I think that's kind of the real takeaway here is that you know, it's it's kind of stunning to me because, you know, really this is a cross-generation game. You know, this game is also coming to PlayStation 4. It's based on a PlayStation 4 original. They've done a really good job at implementing all these new hardware features into the existing game, uh, creating something that looks noticeably better at the same time. And that's not even getting into the 60 frames per second mode, which they've talked about. And I think there's some preview footage out, possibly just for the remastered version that we've seen before. 
Uh, knowing Insomniac and how stable their frame rate was in the original and the way they typically target, they either try to lock to 30 or, you know, mostly lock to 60. I have a lot of confidence that it's going to be very smooth in either mode. And I really can't wait to actually see how they differ visually. Yeah, that'll be the interesting thing. Like what and what kind of cuts they have to make, if any, beyond resolution or ray tracing could be in the product. And I really do doubt like you that it would drop frames at all because they're pretty good at what they do. <laughs> Zomniac. Yeah. And I mean, there's no, there hasn't been any indication that ray tracing is disabled in the 60 FPS mode yet either. So it could very well be there just, you know, reduced in fidelity and, you know, that all of this stuff, it's still uh, unknown at this point. And obviously, you know, we're getting closer to launch, so we'll be able to take a look at it soon enough. Overall, what, what's your, what's your final takeaway from this early preview footage? Uh, I think it looks excellent. Uh, the usage of ray tracing, even though this trailer is so fast moving, uh, if you can't even spend the time to examine that, like the way it looks up close, you can see that it adds a lot to the image and just making it more cohesive. And it just looks great, I think. Yeah, I just almost wish they had showed a bit more, uh, less cinematic gameplay and more kind of the normal kind of gameplay in the game. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But, you know, they got to spice it up for these uh, little sizzle reels, and that's kind of what this is. But still, yeah, we know that Spider-Man's great. It plays great. One of my favorite games of 2018. Uh, and yeah, aside from Demon Souls, this might go down as the best looking launch title that we'll see this time around across the systems. And Sony itself has a lot of amazing first party support right at launch, which, you know, I'm really happy to see. I mean, you've got this, you've got Demon Souls, you've got Destruction All-Stars, you got the Sackboy game, uh, and possibly something else that I'm forgetting. But even still, that's, that's a really, really solid lineup. And then, of course, the third party stuff. So I guess we have to kind of wait and see which games are going to have ray tracing. I mean, I think we've said that or they've said that Watch Dogs should have ray tracing features. Yeah, that's what we've heard. Yeah. I think there should, there's probably some others as well in there, but thus far, this seems like perhaps the most um, ambitious implementation of ray tracing for the, the new generation of titles available at launch. So Yeah, definitely at launch, for sure. But I think that's going to do it for now, given that we don't have that much new footage here. Uh, so thanks for joining me, Alex. Of course, John. And if you guys enjoyed this, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that good stuff. And check us out on Patreon where you can download a nice direct feed version of this video. So if you want to see all that, check it out over there. But until next time, this is John and Alex signing off. Thanks,